What do you say we get the final tank of the fish nook set up tonight? Alright guys, it is finally time. I figured we'd take it tonight and get the last 40 gallon breeder set up here in the fish nook. It's been long enough. But I wanted this one, since I didn't film me setting anything else up per se, I wanted to take you from start to finish on this one. So tonight, we got the tank in, we're gonna get the substrate in, we're gonna get the escaping done, uh, the filtration up and running, and talk a little bit about that. And then probably in the next video, we'll actually add the fish, because I really wanna showcase those fish. It's, they're fish I haven't shown you yet, and I think they're gonna look fantastic in this tank. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to be adding in is the substrate. I'm, all I'm using is some pool filtration sand. It's nothing astronomically. Uh, it's pretty cheap stuff, actually. I'm able to get it for about 12 bucks per bag, and they're 50 pound bags. So I'm using about half of a bag, so I have anywhere we're going to say from 20 to 25 pounds of sand going in. Wasn't too concerned with making a, a, a thick sand substrate or a, you know, a deep sand bed as all the plants going in this tank are going to be, you know, uh, non-root feeders. Well, so let's get this in here. I also am adding in um, a, some, some Malaysian trumpet snails. I know a lot of people say that these are just like the worst things for your tank. I personally love them. One, they're a great food source for puffer fish, but two, they keep that substrate moving. So I personally like them. So I've got a group of those in the sand already. Uh, I did previously wash this sand. It does come in pretty dirty, so I just put it, you know, rinsed it out in a five gallon bucket. So we're gonna get this in and keep moving. Again, I'm not going for anything fancy. This is really just more of an aesthetic in this tank than anything. I really like, I like infiltration sand. Really easy to work with. Rinse is easy. Stays in the tank well, doesn't get blown around. Fish like it. It's good stuff. All right, now let's move on to the hardscape and the plants I'm putting into this tank. So actually I changed my mind. Uh, first, we're actually gonna get the filtration in here. So what I'm using is just um, some sponge filters. Uh, these are from Swiss Tropicals. I really like these. Um, these lift tubes are just phenomenal, very simple to use. I have good success with the sponge filters. Easy to clean, easy to set up, easy to maintenance. Like I said, it's just, everything's just easy about them. And they'll do just fine in this tank. So I do, I'm going to be putting in uh, two sponge filters in this tank. Get this going here. I previously had these running in another tank. Just to try and get them to, well, not to try, but to get them seeded with some beneficial bacteria. That was the whole purpose and goal of that. So we'll get these in here. I'll move these off kind of in the corner areas. They don't get to be anything more specific. And yeah, we'll fix that in a minute. <clears throat> All right, now let's move on <laughs> to the actual hardscape and plants. So the main hardscape I wanted in this tank uh, was some, some wood. I really like the look of wooden tanks, but I also wanted something that was gonna leach some tannins for a while. They'll eventually go away as we do some water changes, but I just, I think this is gonna look really good in this tank. I wanted to kind of simplify this tank, but also give some plants and some cover for the fish that will be in here, but I also want to give a lot of swimming room for the other fish that are going to be in here. You'll, you'll see when we bring the fish down. So the wood we're going to be using is I've actually got a package of Mopani wood. Um, this all came from Adam at Houston Manzanita. He say he's my, my go-to guy now for like hardscape material and uh, wood material. He's just done such a good job for me. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I got six pieces, all ranging anywhere from about six to 10 inches in length. You know, just a nice package of wood. Um, I, I wanted a smaller package to kind of really play with the pieces, you know, put them in, in an order that I thought would look the best in here instead of having a one large 
piece of wood come off this. So let's get started on that. Started putting um, the actual hardscape in the tank. I'm going to get the plants ready. So what I am planning on doing, well, what I am adding into this tank is going to be Anubius. I really like Anubius. It's going to give me the look in the tank I want. Super easy plant to grow. Super easy plant to use. Uh, these all came from aquarium co-op, a couple different species, and these are all just really just healthy plants. I've actually a little bit of a disclaimer, I think I've had these plants for like a month now. They were just hanging out up in another tank. Oh, got a couple snow hitchhikers, that's all right, they'll go in there. So these plants are, see a little bit of dieback on the plants. Um, they'll, they'll come back. Specifically now that we're getting them into their established aquarium. And the light I am using, I'll show you here in a minute, but it is another Finex Stingray. And what's awesome about the stingrays is they actually come with a, a mounting option to mount up into like a canopy or a hood. So I have it mounted up underneath here of the 125 on the stand that they're working. It's, it's working beautifully. The other thing I also have, and these are from uh, Gold Coast Aquatics, is, and I really should have had all these ready <laughs> before we started this video. That's okay though. So these are from Gold Coast Aquatics and they're like, they're, they're a natural hide. Well, they're ceramic, so they are, they are handmade, but this is the natural look to them. Um, think of them as like a Pleco cave. So some of the fish that are going in here, I know are really going to enjoy this, really going to like this. So I got two of them. I got a medium-sized one and a small one. Um, you can definitely get, they sell a larger variety. And I kind of found Gold Coast Aquatics on a whim. And one of those things, again, where it's, you know, I wanted to try it. So we're going to place these in the tank. I know that I really wanted these to be visible more so. So I kind of have an idea of what I want to go for here. And I also decided we're going to add in a large piece of river rock and also a decent sized piece of some Ryu stone. So we got our hardscape set up. So let's get the plants rolling here. And I think most of them are going to go on the rocks. I should have, I should have been pre-soaking this Mopani wood. So I have a feeling these are going to float for a while. That's okay will not harm anything. So to attach Anubius, I'm gonna be using some super glue gel. Um, I have found, I've tested a couple different types. None of them have been, I've found to be toxic. So this is just a Gorilla Glue, but it's primarily, I want the gel form. Easier to use, easier to get the plants to set up on it. So we're gonna start by putting some Anubius onto the Ryu stone. So I'm gonna get a couple out of their pots and I will show you how I attach it. Take our rock, we're gonna take our Anubius. We're just gonna put some, some super glue in on here and then we're gonna glue the rhizome of this Anubius plant to the stone. Um, one thing, I, that's why I love Anubius, is they can be glued or tied down to rock, wood, and they feed off the water column through that rhizome. They don't need to be planted in the substrate. So you can create some, just some, uh, some epic uh, hardscape and when, you know, scaping ideas with this. So we're gonna, like I said, take our rock, take our super glue, and we're gonna just, and I'm very generous when it comes to, to the glue. I find more is more. Okay, so got the super glue down. Just gonna glue, just press that rhizome right onto it. I personally am wearing some latex gloves. I have a very bad habit of uh, super gluing my fingers together. So <laughs> I'm uh, kind of giving myself a little extra layer of protection here. Press and hold that there. And if also what I'll do is I'll go back with the super glue and just kind of add some additional over the rhizome just to make sure it gets glued down to the rock properly. So I say I'm pretty liberal and generous with that. So there's the first piece on. I'm gonna put a couple more on here and we'll show you that here when we're done. So I went ahead and got the hardscape in. Finally got all the newbies points put on there. Um, series of unfortunate events happened and I ran out of super glue gel. So I used some regular super glue. It is very difficult to work with because it doesn't set as fast. It's very running. So I 
use another tactic and I got some sewing thread, like I said, and I just, I helped tie some of these plants down to the rock and the wood that they're attached to. I also used some of the grooves in the Mopani wood to help the Anubia stay there. So this is, again, this is very, this is kind of the beginning of this aquarium and I'm, it's gonna evolve over time. Already I'm looking at and thinking of more plants that I can add in the background to have more of a lush, you know, effect. But this is a good starting point. I wanted to get this going, get the fish down here, and we'll continue to add as we do future updates. So right now I do have my homemade uh, Python system that I've shown you how to make, and we're gonna fill this tank with water and do a quick time lapse. Thank you for joining me. There we have it, the final 40 breeder and the final tank that's going in the fish nook right now is set up. Water's in it, plants are in it, filtration's in it, heater's in it. We're missing fish, so stay tuned for the next video and we're gonna add some fish to that tank. Totally forgot to tell you the best part about this tank and the setup. None of the wood floated.